Yeah, so we sh you know that the, the primary regulative principle over all regulative principles is to always remember Krishna. Right, smartavyam, smartavyam satatam vishnu, vishmartavya najatu krit, sarve vidi nisida shor, etayor eva kinkara. The, the, the one rule or one regulation over all other regulations is to always remember Krishna and never forget him. So those who are devotees, who are in Krishna consciousness, they don't see any difference between heaven and hell and liberation. Heaven and hell and liberation. So the material, the karmis, karmis, they are trying to be happy by adjusting the material world. They are trying to be comfortable in the material world. We see the karmis, you know, they're always trying to, you know, they try to make themselves comfortable, build a nice house, get the car, they want to be happy, they want to live forever. We see the people from, Burm from Myanmar, they go off to Thailand to try to make money. They think if I make money in Thailand, I'll bring it back to Myanmar and I'll be rich and I'll live comfortably. And when they come back to Myanmar, then there's COVID and nobody can enjoy. Everybody has to stay in their house and they have to just sit there and they have nothing to do. So karmis are trying to be happy, but they never succeed. And the jnani, he wants to be happy. He's thinking, if I can get liberation, I will merge with the Supreme. I'll become God. So the jnani, he, want, he has the biggest material desire. He wants to become the Supreme. And to do that, the jnani, to, to, to do that, they'll go away from the world, They'll go to the Himalayas, they'll go in the cave, they'll go into isolation all on their own. But they cannot get actual liberation. They have to come back again to the material world. Because they're trying to give up all activity, they're trying to stop activity. But the nature of the soul is to be active. 
And so their jnani is, but their intelligence is not, their intelligence is not properly purified, so they fall down. It is stated like that in Srimad Bhagavatam that uh, uh, it stated that Avishud, that their intelligence is not purified. Avishuddha Buddhaya. Arora Krishrena Parampatam Tada Patanti Addo Nadreta Yasmad Angraiha. That this is the, the verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam describing how the jnani will come back to the material world. Right. He may go into the Brahman, he may enter into the Brahma Jyoti, but he can't stay there forever because there's no activity there. There's no variety there. There's nothing to do there. There's no relationships there. You can't have, you don't have a wife, you don't have a family, you don't have any friends, you're just one with the Brahman. And so it's very boring to be in that situation and that means that's why they come back to the material world because they want activity. It's the nature of the soul that wants to be active. We want relationships, we want variety, we need that. But if you go, but if you take this impersonal path, this is what this is what will happen. You'll simply get trouble. You go into the Brahma Jyoti and enter into that oneness and just become very bored. And when they come back to the material world, the jnani, he doesn't know what to do, he doesn't know what, what spiritual activities are, he only knows material activities. And so he'll do some material welfare work, he'll open a school, or he'll open a hospital, or he'll open a library. But they don't know how to be engaged in spiritual activities. But the devotee, one who is Krishna conscious, he knows how to be engaged in spiritual activities wherever he goes. So Prabhupada never taught us to meditate in a quiet place. And 
And a devotee like Prahlad Maharaj, he also doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to sit in a quiet place and meditate. A devotee like Prahlad wants to distribute Krishna consciousness everywhere. You, you know, there's different kinds of spiritual masters. Some spiritual masters, they're very good at getting, getting the money. They'll take the money from all the people. But the real, the real spiritual master, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's not interested in the money. He wants to take the miseries away from all the people. People are suffering in this material world and the Vaishnava is compassionate on them. He knows the only way to save them from material life and from all the suffering of the material world, he has to give them Krishna consciousness. So Prahlad Maharaj, he's, he's not a cheater. He's not like these people who sit down and pretend they're great devotees, pretend they're meditating on the Supreme. Prahlad Maharaj, and so we're Prahlad Maharaj wanders, just like we are also wandering. We're, we've been wandering in the material world, trying to find some happiness, trying to find some security. But looking, trying to find happiness, but the real happiness is within. We want, we have to look within and find Krishna within. So to help us do that, we need the association with devotees like Prahlad Maharaj. There was one devotee, there was one senior devotee, he came, he came with Prabhupada to India in the very beginning, 19... 69, 70, he came to India with Prabhupada and he was a brahmachari, he was a good brahmachari and he was thinking maybe he'd take sannyas one day. And so he said to Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, I think I should go to the Himalayas and find a, an ashram and I'll stay there and become a good brahmachari. <laughs> We, we have so many women in our Krishna consciousness movement, it's not very easy to be a brahmachari. And so the devotee asked Prabhupada, can you go to Himalayas and go to ashram there, just be a 
practice brahmachari. But Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, no, 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 don't go that, don't do that, that's not good. You stay here with the devotees and just continue with the Sankirtan. I met I met one man in China, young man in China, and he'd gone to live in a cave. He went to live in a cave and he spent a, a month in a cave. What's mean cave, Maharaj? Hole in the mountain. Gufabaru. So he told me, he said, after he, he said, after he came out, after one month in the cave, he had much more material desires than he had in the beginning when he first went in the cave. So material desires don't go away just by going to live in a cave. The material desires don't go away just because you're a brahmachari. We have to change the desire. We have to develop the desire for Krishna, for service to Krishna. So the proper, the proper service for the devotee, the real way for the engagement of a devotee in Krishna consciousness is to go door to door and tell people about Krishna. We should be convinced that if we don't have Krishna consciousness, our life is useless, we'll never be happy. So we have to go and tell people about Krishna. The more we tell people about Krishna, the more we give the mercy, the more we get the mercy. So now, this month is the Prabhupada Marathon. Devotees all over the world, they're trying to distribute books. And on the 25th of December is the day Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita. Right, they call it Gita, they call it Gita Jayanti, the day Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita. So it's a very good day to distribute Bhagavad Gitas. We distribute many, many Bhagavad Gitas that day. All over the world we try to distribute Bhagavad Gitas, but especially that day, it's a very good day. People like to give presents at Christmas time. So 25th December, that's Christmas Day. And it's also Ekadasi, it's the day Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita. So 
केही उपहार दिन्छ त्यो दिन सबैले धेरै जस्ताले उपहार दिन्छन् तर हामीहरूलाई पुरा राम्रो अवसर उपहार भगवत गीता दिन पाइन्छ So I hope all the devotees in Myanmar will also try and distribute some Bhagavad Gita. Even if you don't distribute the Bhagavad Gita, at least tell people about Krishna. In the Chaitanya Bhagavat, it describes how Lord Chaitanya told Lord Nityananda and Haridas to, 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 that they had to do, go door to door and tell people about Krishna. Chaitanya Bhagavat is famous Bengali poetry, so it's very beautiful. He's written very nicely. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya told Haridas and Nijananda Prabhu, Priti gari gari giat koroe bhiksha Bolo Krishna, Bajo Krishna, Koro Krishna, Shiksha. They, they should go to every door. They should go in every lane, every alley, in every gully, in every door. They should knock on the door and they should fall at the feet of the people and tell them, chant the name of Krishna, worship Krishna and read the books about Krishna. चैतन्य भागवत में चैतन्य महाप्रभु नित्यानंद प्रभु हरिदास ठाकुर कि गांव गांव गली गली द्वार द्वार सब का दरवाजा दरवाजा में डटकाउे कर उन्हींसंग याचना कर भगवान को नाम जप कर भगवान को कीर्तन कर भगवान को बारे कृष्ण को पुस्तक पढ़ू भाई भू That is real mercy. That is real compassion to go to the people and give them Krishna consciousness. And Lord Nityananda, he chose to go to the most fallen people. He chose to go to Maga, Jaghai and Madai, who were drunkards, who were very sinful and very degraded. Some, some devotees, when they go out for preaching, They, they, they want to go only to the rich people, they want to go only to the pious people, sometimes they want to go only to the Indian people, the Hindus. Or sometimes we think, I'm Nepali, I should only preach to the Nepalis. But Krishna is in the heart of every living entity. We have to go everywhere. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadya Kabunai Shravanadi Shuchachite Korihi Udai Love of Krishna is in the heart of all living entities and it's awakened by hearing. We have to give everyone the chance to hear. Lord 
Right? This is a real loving exchange between one devotee and another. We don't have much money, we don't have much opulence, much wealth. We don't. What, what do we have to give to people? Materially, we're quite poor. But we can give the holy name of Krishna to people, and that's the greatest benefit. The holy name of Krishna is Chintamani. It's a wish-fulfilling object. It can fulfill all of our desires. There was this one man, he was, was a devotee of Lord Shiva and he heard about Sanatana Goswami. He said he heard Sanatana Goswami has a touchstone. So he found Sanatana Goswami in his place in Vrindavan and he came there and he made friends with him and he, asked, he begged him, he said, I, I heard you have a touchstone, could, could you give it to me? So Sanatan said to him, he said, Oh, you want that stone that can turn everything into gold? He said, He said, It's over there with the garbage. He said, I threw it away. So the man rushed over there and he found the stone and he said, Oh, is this it? Oh, and he was using it and he was making things into gold. So the man, the man was thinking, now, now I've got this stone, I'm rich, all my problems are solved. But he was quite intelligent man and he thought, that why is Sanatan throwing this stone away? It's so valuable. Why is he throwing it away? So he said to he said to Sanatan, he said, you must have something more valuable than this stone when you're throwing this away. And Sanatan said, Oh, definitely. Sir, I've got something much more valuable than that stone. That's just a you know, that stone, that's no good. So then so the man begged Sanatan, he said, can you give me what you've got more valuable? Can you give me the more, most valuable thing you've got? So Sanatan said, well, I'll give you the more valuable thing, but first you have to throw that stone away. You have to throw it into the Yamuna. So Sanatan said, 
So the man was hesitant, but Sanatan told him, he said, you have to throw it away if you want the most valuable thing, you have to get rid of this stone. And so then the, the man threw it away and Sanatan said, okay, now you sit down here and Sanatan handed him some japa beads. He said, now we're going to chant Hare Krishna. So the holy name is like Chintamani. It can fulfill all of our desires. Our real desire, what we want, the real deepest desire is we want to be with Krishna. But we are forgetting Krishna and we are trying to find company in so many other people. The real friend of everyone, the person we love, everyone loves more than anybody else is Krishna. This was shown very, very clearly in the pastime in the, where Lord Brahma stole away the cows and calves belonging to Krishna. Krishna, remember Krishna was with the cowherd boys in the forest and then the cows went missing, Krishna went to look for the cows and when Krishna went away, Brahma came and he stole away all the cowherd boys. And he had also stolen away all the cow, all the calves as well. So Krishna was left all Krishna was all alone in the forest. Brahma had taken all the cowherd boys and all the calves. So Krishna didn't want that the, the mothers, all the people in Vrindavan would be very worried that what happened, who took everything, where did they go, he thought they would be very worried. So Krishna expanded himself to take the place of all the calves and all the cowherd boys. And Brahma had taken them away, he just took them away for one moment of his time, but one mo moment of his time was one year on this planet. So for one year, Krishna was taking the place of all the cowherd boys and all the calves. And all the mothers of the cowherd boys, they didn't know, they thought this was their son, but actually it was Krishna. And even the cows, they didn't know that these calves were also Krishna. They thought it was their own calf. But they were giving more love for Krishna. 
All the cowherd boys, the mothers of the cowherd boys, they were giving, feeding their breast milk to their to their sons. And the cowherd boys, they're already five and six years old. But the mothers, the breast milk is still flowing, so they feed the milk to their sons. Usually by the time the child is five or six, the mother's milk is not flowing. But because it was Krishna, and because the mothers love Krishna so much, the milk was flowing in their breast. And the same with the cows. The cows were giving so much more milk because they thought these calves, they, they thought it was their own calf, but actually it was Krishna in the form of their calf. So we should understand the person who we really love more than anyone is Krishna. Each and each and every living entity is part and parcel of Krishna. But because we are attached to the body, we identify with the body, we are thinking, this is my family, this is my son, this is my child, this is my mother. We're thinking like that. So devotees are very eager to give this knowledge of Krishna consciousness to other people. We have to teach them the message of Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught this knowledge to everyone. And Lord Chaitanya told everyone, become a guru. Wherever you go, whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna and then this way become a guru. Lord Chaitanya gave this instruction to a Brahmana in Kurmadesh. Not Madhya Pradesh, Kurmadesh. Kurma, Kurma Kshetra. Kurma Kshetra. Kurmakshetra, south of Jagannath Puri, on the way to uh, on the way to Vishakapatna. It's it's a famous temple. Ramanuja was thrown there by Lord Jagannath. Ramanuja had come to Puri and he was going to ch he was going to reform the deity worship there. He didn't like how they were worshiping the deity. So he went to see the king of Puri and he told the king of Puri, we have to do something, we have to have a meeting, call all the Brahmins, I want to talk to them and tell them. 
So Ramanuj, Ramanuj Acharya was very important, very famous, everyone respected him. So the king said, okay, tomorrow I'll call everyone, you come back tomorrow. So the next morning all the brahmanas came, all the people doing the seva and the puja there, they all came, but Ramanuja didn't come. What happened to Ramanuja? The king was saying, what happened? Where is he? He's supposed to come. He was the one who wanted the meeting. Where is he? <laughs> so they didn't know where Ramanuja had gone. And then they found out later, Lord, during the night, Lord Jagannath had taken Ramanuja and took him out of Jagannath Puri and put him in Kurmakshetra. Lord Jagannath didn't want Ramanuja Acharya changing the deity worship. So you, if you go there to Kurmakshetri, you see this is a Sri Vaishnava temple. They built, they, they've renovated the temple and you know there's a few Sri Vaishnavas there. Ramanuja stayed there for some time and did the puja. It's a place of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. And so, like about 400 years after Ramanuja, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he met one Brahmana. The Brahmana was very nice. The Brahmana brought him to his home and fed him. And then the Brahmana said he wanted to go and travel with him. The Brahmana said, I can't, I can't tolerate any more this family life, the material world is too painful. Please take me with me, with you, liberate me from this family life, let me go with you. And Lord, Lord Chaitanya shouted at him and said, No, stop it, don't speak like that. And Lord Chaitanya told him, You stay here and tell people about Krishna, and in this way you become a guru and save the world. So people are suffering because of lack of Krishna consciousness. We have to teach them. We have to give them knowledge of Krishna. In 1977, Srila Prabhupada gave a pandal in Mumbai, in the big, a big, a big uh, grounds in Mumbai. Thousands of people came to hear Prabhupada. And the title of Prabhupada's talk was, 
There is no scarcity in the world except Krishna consciousness. Mm. We have to we have to be convinced if we have Krishna consciousness, we have everything we need. And if we don't have Krishna consciousness, even if you have a fortune, even if you have the most beautiful wife and the most wonderful house and family and children and everything, but if you don't have Krishna consciousness, it's useless. So the devotees have the most valuable thing in Krishna consciousness. We have to... We have to we have to appreciate Krishna consciousness and we have to value it and we have to take care of our Krishna consciousness. Mm. We have to do proper sadhana, hearing and chanting. We have to study Prabhupada's books ourselves, not just only sell them to others, not just tell others to read them, we have to read them ourselves. So, Prahlad Maharaj is pre preaching like this to Lord Nishringadev. Okay, we will stop. Ask if there's any question. Hare Krishna, Dana Bhav Pranams. Maharaji, Bhagavad Dharma Prabhu is asking that what is the best way to do preaching? What is the easiest way to do preaching for everyone who is unqualified even? Just go and chant the holy name, do Sankirtan. Devotees in Delhi are going out every day in Delhi in different parts of the city of Delhi and they're doing Sankirtan. Even, even though there's so much COVID there, they go out every day, they wear a mask, they chant. Uh, 
And you can put a you can put a table, put some books on the table and let interested people come and see the books. Or like I said, you can go door to door, just you knock on the door and you ask people to chant the holy name of Krishna. And just tell them about Krishna, whatever you know about Krishna, you share it with them, you tell them. Yeah, when, the, when the devotees first went to India, there was one householder couple and they brought their little daughter with them. And she used to go with a picture of Krishna and she would hold it up and say, this is Krishna, this is God. Prabhupada said, she's the best preacher. Anybody can preach. You don't have to be a big scholar. You just have to tell people about Krishna, whatever you know. Krishna is in everyone's heart and if people are sincere, if they hear about Krishna, then their Krishna consciousness will be awakened. You just have to have a little courage. You have to be a little bold, just like Prabhupada was so bold. Even though he was 70 years old, he went to America. And he went in the park. In New York City, he found a park and he went in the park, stood under a tree and chanted Hare Krishna. And people came and joined him. They started, they, they started to chant with him. So anybody can do this kind of this preaching work, you know. But who wants to do it? That's the question. Who wants to do it? <laughs> Just like Columbus, you know the name Columbus? He sailed from Europe to America. They say he was the first one to go from Europe to America. He took a boat in 1492, I think. So people would say to him, Oh, anybody could have done it. You just have to get a boat. If I had a boat, I could have done it too. I could have gone to America. But so Columbus said, but you didn't do it, I did it. And they're saying, oh, anybody could have done it, I could have done it. So then Columbus, then he got an egg and he said, here, can you make this egg stand on its end? Did you make the egg stand up? So they got the egg and the person was trying, the egg would always fall over, roll over. 
So they said, no, it's impossible, we can't make the egg stand up. And so Columbus took the egg and he went and he just tapped it and he made a dent so the egg stood. He just hit the, hit the, egg, hit the egg on the table so that it could make it bottom and flat and then it stood. And they say, oh, anybody could have done it, anybody could have done it. And so he said, well, I told you, I asked you, why didn't you do it? You couldn't do it. In the same way people are saying, oh, how to preach, how to preach. You simply go out and preach and chant Hare Krishna, that's preaching. Mm. If the people see you in a dhoti with tilak and shaved head, then they'll know you're a devotee. Just by seeing you, you can preach to people. No, you just have to be a little, you just have to have courage and Krishna is with you, Krishna will help you. There are devotees of Krishna everywhere, they're just waiting to find a devotee. So don't be shy. Don't hide. Don't think it's difficult. It's not so difficult. Krishna is with you. Prabhupada is with you. They will help you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any other question? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Dhanavad Pranam. Hare Krishna, Dhanavad Pranams. Vyabhanu Prabhu. Maharaj, the Anandyani, Jodhra, Bhagavan Sri, Sambandha, Sambandha, Lamele, Bhulega, Jodhra, Maharaji, Nimai Prabhu is asking that uh, everyone has, uh, we have to, uh, we have to no. awaken Krishna consciousness, Krishna consciousness on everyone's relationship with Krishna. Yeah, uh, but we, we are not even. Someone Samanda, relationship, everyone, yes. everyone has a relationship with Krishna, but we are ourselves not, uh, Kere Prabhu Ajay? I mean, we will we forget that we have to be reminded. Uh, we are forgetting ourselves, we may have or not. I know, but... Uh, I mean, like, how are you? We know the relations with the Krishna, but we haven't feel it. Kiyo, that means, kina dila feel or na sagi dayi na. Oh, he, Maharaj, Maharaj, the Nimai Prabhu is thinking that how, why we cannot feel we have a relationship with Krishna? Well, you have to, you have to call his name. You have to want to have a relationship with him. 
He's there. He's just waiting for you to open your heart to him. Krishna fulfills the desires. If you have the desire to have a relationship with him, Krishna will come to you and help you. So you have to really approach him, you have to talk to him, you have to call his name. He's in your heart, he's your best friend, but you're not taking care of him, you neglect him. So everything that Krishna reciprocates with us, when we have feelings for him, he will have feelings for us. If you think of Krishna ten minutes a day, Krishna will think of you ten minutes a day. But if you think of Krishna all day, Krishna will think of you all day. So Krishna is in our heart. He knows our desire. He knows what we want. So you have to really want, you have to really want to be with Krishna and to feel it. I have to feel Krishna is a person. He's not just some energy, not just some light. He's a person. He's his feelings. So you have you have to approach you have to approach him with the, the, in the mood of one you that you want to surrender to him, you want to take shelter, you want to love him. So it it's a process, you know. You have to you have to show your you have to show your sincerity that you you're really serious. You really want to be with Krishna. You want to love Krishna. Okay, no more questions. Eh? Why we have a Steel, material, material desire. Why we have material desires? Yes, <laughs> he is asking. Because, because we want to enjoy, separate from Krishna. <laughs> we are thinking we can enjoy better without Krishna. Material desires mean forgetfulness of Krishna. When we forget Krishna, then we have material desires.
भौतिक इच्छा नहीं भगवान भूल हो जब भौतिक इच्छा हो जाए भगवान भूलने दे गई So it's very easy to go into Maya, very easy to fall into Maya. And very difficult to get out of Maya. If we, just by our own efforts, very difficult. But if you take the shelter, if we take the shelter of the devotees, then we can easily get free of Maya. Yeah, as soon as we surrender, as soon as we accept Krishna's representative, accept Prabhupada's teachings and follow them, dedicate ourselves fully to Prabhupada's teachings, then we'll get out of Maya, there will be no more Maya. Maya is our illusion, we create it. But as soon as we let go of the, this desire to enjoy without Krishna, we just hold on to Krishna, then all the Maya is gone, it's all finished. Maya means that which it's not real, it's just the illusion. So we're thinking something is separate from Krishna, but actually nothing is separate from Krishna. Everything is Krishna's energy. So this world is not the material, this is not the material, actually this is a spiritual world for the pure devotees. Those who are Krishna conscious, they see Krishna here everywhere. They don't see Maya, they see the spiritual world. We just have to surrender to Krishna. There's no other way, you have to surrender. So what does surrender mean? Means give up this independent mood. Don't think we're separate from Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you very much, very nice. We hope you all have a nice week in Krishna consciousness. Stay away from the virus. Stay healthy. Stay healthy. And always remember Krishna, never forget. Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Go back to Go back to Ki. Hare Krishna. Oh, I'm going to